Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today I'm going to be working on number 31 on the 53 Math MTEL. This is part of the 2014-2015 uh, workshop series for teachers that are preparing for uh, different types of teacher certification exams in math, science, English, and history. Uh, today we're going to look at a problem that is involving uh, mathematics and specifically with data analysis. Now, when you have a problem like 31 and you scan it over, I think one of the things that sticks out right away is this graph, this coordinate grid with these data points. We call this a scatter plot. Scatter plots are used to, to see if there's a positive or negative correlation between two factors. And there's information here that we could read on those two factors. That's one aspect. There's another aspect. We have an X and Y coordinate grid. And this is also a, an algebraic concept uh, because we, we can look at information and we can look at this data and we can draw something called a line of best fit. Um, and that line of best fit is a linear equation. So we could also um, draw connections of things that we already know from uh, linear lines and whatnot and sort of think about what the line of best fit would be, which usually is a line that goes to the first and last point in a scatter plot. It can kind of give us uh, a little bit of insight into the information. All right, so Here's a problem just by looking at the picture. I know it's data analysis and maybe a little bit of algebra. Let's uh, look, uh, look at the question and then look back at the picture. The question says, a biologist is studying the factors that limit the population size of a small mammal in a woodland. Which of the following statements is best supported by the data in the graph? Now we have a new element. We have a specific context in which we're going to be looking at this content. Now what is the con context of the problem? We're talking about small mammals like squirrels. Squirrels in a population and the, the more female squirrels there appears to be a decrease in the number of little baby squirrels. Th that would be the offspring. So always important in a problem like this not only to be able to pick out the content, scatter plots, uh, line of best fit, but also the context in which it's presented. If we look at the graph now and we think about the number of little squirrels per acre and the mean number of offspring per, per female, what does that mean? The average number of little baby squirrels, we see that there's a trend, a negative correlation, meaning as there are more females, the number of female squirrels increases, the number of uh, offspring um, baby squirrels decreases. I know there are a lot of teachers out there saying, Nowhere in this problem does it talk about squirrels. I get it. I'm making it concrete. By making it concrete, it will make the graph make a lot more sense. All right? Now let's look at our, our options here. Number one, uh, which we're looking for the statement that's best supported in the graph. So it has to be in the graph. Five females per acre is a density that will sustain the current population. Well, we really don't know what the current population is, right? Nowhere in this question does it give us the current population of offspring or females. Okay, let's, so A is not the answer. Let's look at B. Um, B says, factors other than density had a greater effect on the number of offspring produced. Well, what other factors? What are these factors? Again, these other factors are not included in our data chart, so we really can't make any statement based on them. We're just looking at what's in the in the chart itself, whatever's in the scatter plot. The, all right. Okay. What about C? Approximately six offspring would be born to females in areas with a density of nine females per acre. Well, let's see. Six offspring. If there's approximately there's six offspring when there's nine uh, females per acre. So I go here. Nine females, nine females, guess what? That looks pretty good. At nine females, we have six offspring, and I'm using my line of best fit to sort of draw that prediction. Um, the line of best fit is not going to be there on your graph. You have to place the line of best fit in, and it would appear, right, that if this trend were to continue, and drawing that line, that's pretty bad. You have to keep it with the original line of best fit. That it would kind of match up there. 
Um, this is why C is the correct answer. And then D, 22 p females per acre would be too great to support the production uh, of any offspring. Well, if there was one more, if uh, let me clear this up a little bit. If there was one more little squirrel there, there would be zero. The problem with D is that that information is not on our graph. And we're looking for something that's best supported by the data in the graph. It has to be in the graph. That's the key. And this one right here, you know, even with the line of best fit, it looks like at 22 it's going to be closer to maybe um, one offspring per acre. All right, see what I mean? So C here is the correct answer. All right, team, I hope you found this video helpful. This is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.